Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time I'm joined by my friend Tim who runs the Pan Collectors website Ticket.net. Now I'm very excited to be here today and there's so much to see and share with you I cannot wait for you to take a look. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. Hello Tim and thank you for joining us today. Hello Jules, nice to have you. I can't believe we've been friends for probably what 20 years well, there are there are thereabouts our love of pan books our mutual love of pan um, and this is the first time i've actually got around to visiting you although saying that you've only visited me once haven't you yes uh, when we went to see um uh, john john rains that time as we look at your collection which is it, just mind-boggling really for one publisher i i am in totally in awe of it um i wanted to just ask you a few questions about sort of how you got into collecting to begin with so did you originally start collecting pan or was it other books i've always liked books um yeah. from when i was very large, small and i was always encouraged by my mother uh to, to have books and she bought us magazines so yeah uh so I, i've got a complete still got a complete set of look and learns oh wow and, uh, yeah oh, they were the big tabloids weren't yes. they yeah yeah uh, and uh, then going to the library with big oars and yeah all those and, and i used to buy a few paperbacks but really, Pan started in 1976 when we moved here. We weren't going to stay here, but um, we seem to have stayed here. And <laughs> I got a few books, and I thought, oh, I'll put a shelf up in the in the toilet. Yeah. And I put a <laughs> shelf around the top of the toilet, and I put my pans on. Well, it, it actually, it wasn't just the pans; it was the James Bond. Ah, right, which I think yeah, is yeah. one of the ways a lot of people get into it. It was pans. for me, yeah. yeah and I looked, and, was I, me, yeah. and then. I won't say I was sitting there, but you know, <laughs> while you're looking at them, you suddenly realise, oh, they're all numbered. And that is the fatal... <sighs> yeah, spot. cool, you said it, yeah. yeah so the number in is, the, is the way. So and so and so. And then you think, oh, I want number one was. And I went, and not long after, I went to the local market where there was a very good bookstore. Yeah. And there's a lady there who'd got like um, an old banana type... A banana box, box yeah. And she'd got... All pans that because the sort right. of all the ones that were just the numbers, yeah, starting from one, two, three, Blimey. and I had to have it, and and it was peanuts really, yeah, for, yeah, for what yeah. They were worth. And then uh, so I put those, and you realised yes, I need a few more. Mm -hmm. And we were lucky that we had a very good bookshop at Burntwood. Unfortunately, not there anymore. Yeah, uh, Royden and John, and John always used to keep back any pans he would keep back for me. Uh -huh. So I always got first pick. And wow. he'd never mind it if I just turned the lot down. I not really? Just, but you had first look. Yeah. And at 50p a time, if that, you know. That's brilliant. Some, yeah. Sometimes 30p, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that sort of mark on it. And uh, it was fantastic. And, uh, oh, wow. So, but then, unfortunately, you find the internet. and um, Right. And then yeah. things changed quite a yes, bit, didn't the they? the bookshops yeah. started closing down. Charity shops didn't stock. They were, no. Didn't keep them anymore. And so you started going on the net and then... It, becomes a little more expensive it's true yeah it's funny it's the same i always this is you know i collect the penguins as well as the pans and in fact all those pre-isbn's the publishers came up with their own numbering system and i liken it very much to like the comic collectors where it starts from number one and you want to get them all yeah and um with pan like you say that's the impulse isn't it yeah. you, you want to fill in all the numbers but back then um i mean what did you use as a guide or I mean or were you making it up as you went along there was were well, richard williams's the dragon bee uh, bibliographies dragon yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Uh, i've got two or three editions of that right uh, yeah. but after that it was sort of basically just carrying the net trying to find the numbers look for so, ones that you didn't have yeah i mean i did contact pan and the archives and they're very yeah. good but they haven't got lists of no, they have everything that's a card file system, yeah, which is no good if you want a list to try and find. And of course, they they weren't very good with the numbers. Right, they skipped some. There were duplicates. Yeah, um, why they had to go to G one hundred and one. Right, um, instead of GP. G, yeah. Instead of G one. Yeah, but so you got one to four hundred and forty or so it is, and then G one hundred and one. Uh, and they're all over the place. Yeah. so you, you can't always guarantee you've got them all. Because you don't know whether they they didn't bother issuing something. No, that's true. So, I mean, with all the years that you've been collecting now, you've probably looked at 
every edition, oh, almost yeah. certainly now, yes. haven't you? Yeah. And I've got a Whitaker's uh, paperbacks in print yeah. from 1960 up to 1980 something. Right. And when, when they started off as a, like a, a pamphlet, and yeah. they ended up as a huge hardback. Uh, and have you been cross cross checking them? I have tried yeah. best. The earlier ones, it was easier. Yeah, and then more difficult. There's just too much in the later ones. Yeah, God, blimey. But, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's, it, yeah. It, it is a difficult thing, isn't it? Um, but yeah, trying to get them all. I think. Well, you've pretty much. Are well, you still after that crossword I book? Am, I, yeah. I, th- I think, looking on my Excel spreadsheet, yeah, and the numbers, I think there are two thousand three hundred ninety-one. Titles, right? Albeit some of them, like Lost Horizon, yeah. number two, you've got six different covers. Yeah. But as discrete titles, I think it's that, mm. and I am one short. So I have two thousand three hundred ninety different the one ones. One I'm short yeah. of is the Pam Book of Junior Crosswords, book three, book three, X seven oh five by Burgess. Crazy. Isn't I it? have a second printing. Right, is is holding the place in the on the so shelf. it was even reprinted. Yes, yes, Incredible. which has exactly the same cover, except it doesn't have the number. It just has the uh, letter, the price yeah. letter on the spine. So did you check that one out at Pan? They have got it. So it does exist in the first yes, printed. I, I, See, all I, I can I think try of, yeah, in spine, and I actually gave them a copy of Casino Royale. Really, the first printing, right? Was, because they haven't got one no, and I yeah. dropped subtle hints that maybe we could this do an exchange yeah, this would be unfortunately it didn't work Plimenech. what does the card say about the printing this of that one? it's a sort of normal printing uh, run uh, of about 25,000 25,000 see I have known in the past like there's a famous Doctor Who book um, The Wheel in Space yeah. but Target in the 80s which um, there was something that happened at the printing so very the initial run went out to the bookshops of say 5,000 but then there was like a warehouse fire or it was a flood or the lorry crashed with them all on board and it made that particular one rare later on there's several comics that are like that they're sort of known to be scarce I just wonder if on the way back from the printers that one possibly got I don't you know, know something happened to it know. yeah there's nothing in the archive I, I about mean, it i've got there were they did, did eight junior crossword books mm. and i've got the other seven so no i problem. live in hope that it's out yeah. there i mean things like um what did i have not as a stranger mm. by morton thompson yeah and i've got the 90 you could find the 1961 edition 6061 edition. there were on, on all the websites they've all got you know, somebody's selling a copy, yeah. and I've got the artwork from 1969, and I couldn't find it. <laughs> so I wrote to, I contacted Pam, yeah. and I said, yes, it's out there. They printed 250,000 copies, so why can't I find one? And as luck would have it, I did actually find it. You found one at the end, end yeah. And, and I'm hoping it will be the same with <laughs> crossword book. God, blimmin' it. It's, it's funny, isn't it? But yeah. there's certainly... Um, several penguins like that, you know, yeah. but they've sort of got an excuse because they're generally wartime ones or ones that were sent to the armed forces overseas which of course pan came just after the second world war didn't it that's when uh alan bott well, yes. uh, created it and that's debatable as to when's their birthday oh yeah i was there saying that I, I, so i mm. think I, I i think it was the first of september yeah. 1944 because that's when the name was the company was incorporated that's the word so and not um not when the first one came out well the first ones were in 1944 Five. Yeah. And then some in nineteen forty July nineteen forty six. But the first one was July nineteen number one. Yeah. Ten stories by Kipling. Was um September nine no, July nineteen forty seven. Right. Which is when Pan takes um it's it's dates from if you That's like. where they're doing it from. Which, yeah. which funnily enough on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you get the memories come up. Yeah. The one today was we were at Pan's seventy fifth bash yesterday. Right. In, in two thousand seventeen. Mm. Ah yes, yeah. It's a funny one that because I mean, penguins celebrate the day the first ten were published. You know. Yes. Um, but they, yeah. didn't, they didn't have an odd selection earlier, did they? Didn't have those odd. They six. did not. No, and uh, well, Alan A had his own. Well, he was at um, the other publishers, wasn't it? Um, the, the the family business before the penguins came along. As we've been walking around him, um, you can't help but notice literally every scrap of wall is covered with <coughs> beautiful um, 
original, not all, but mostly pan cover art work, but you've got it from other publishers as well. Mm. Um, what made you get into the, the artwork? Is it just another extension of the I, collection? I'm, it's almost since I was an art teacher. Aha, uh -huh. right. Uh, I, I actually trained as, as for primary, so I didn't actually get a chance to be humiliated by the children mm -hmm. who uh, were often better than me at, um, at artwork. Mm. So, uh, yes, so ever since then I have actually been interested in uh, artwork. In, in artwork, uh, yeah. I, mean, I, I just see them as miniature masterpieces that when you see them as a piece of artwork rather than a yeah. little 4x7, you appreciate how much work has gone into that cover Yeah, and how little appreciated the artists are. Absolutely, and we are losing yeah. more and more. There aren't that many out there now. No. And nowadays, it's it's a lost art. Excuse the pun. I mean, yes. it really is. Um, publishers they'd rather have just a bit of typography knocked up in an afternoon on a computer, rather than something that an artist would probably read the book if he had chance and really think about it and add all those different elements to it. It is a shame, but that's what makes Pan in particular out of all the other vintage publishers. I think it's got the best cover artwork of all of them. Uh, just brilliant, you know. I mean, I really, really. Nice they are still keeping it going. Yeah. With the sci-fi yeah, sort true. Of romantic yeah. fiction, they pin on the lows, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's something. They, they and there's a lot of famous names out there. Mm. Yeah. I like the Glance um, SF Masterwork jackets. That's a particular modern series that I like. Um, do you have a particular favourite artist for Pan? I mean, yeah, I'm slightly biased, I suppose, in yeah. that uh, I've got background stuff for Sam Beckman. Yeah, absolutely. Um, He's my favourite. I've got background yeah. stuff for Hans Helwig. So yeah. I, I I suppose Hans Helwig really, because he, he, he famous, must have yeah. done 400, 500, as did Sam. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he, I think, I think because I've got his sketches, a lot of his sketches, I can see the process. Yeah. Uh, how much he did before he did it. Whereas with, with Sam, mm. I've got all of his, his photos. Negatives and that, yeah. And it, somehow it doesn't seem quite the same doing it. Not the, the same. Photo. No, I suppose, yeah. So Hans Helwig built the covers up with sketches and yes, then yes. built them into the fully painted jackets. Yes. And Sam, like a lot of the American artists, would stage them in photographs. Was, this, was that with Kitty as well? Yes, yeah, with him and Kitty, yes. And, um, and then paint those yes. photographs, yeah. And Jimmy's brother-in-law. Right, uh, yeah. The famous brilliant. poster of Confessions of a Taxi Driver. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we've, I suppose <laughs> that, that, that's Kitty leaning in. There's, his brother-in-law is the taxi driver with his own taxi. All right, yeah, he drew, drew them all in. Things like that, and you think, those are the bits I find just that I have interest in. Yeah, absolutely, themselves. yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Well, you know, certainly, um, as I, you know, as we record this, I'll show some of your artwork, but um, we will do like a little 10-minute dedicated video where we look around at some of your bits of artwork, because I think it is fantastic to see. You know, do you intend getting all the different cover variations? I'd like to. Yeah. For, uh, for, the, for the older ones the for older. the yeah the pre-ISBN ones yes. yeah. I, I mean I still do it with some of the new ones if I like the colours uh, yeah uh, but the earlier ones and I'm always amazed every now and again I see something on eBay and I go oh. with regard to sort of copyright I mean Pan are fully aware that you've got the website there and they don't they don't no, mind no, at they all, do they? All, They're probably right. quite flattered by yes, it, I would yes. imagine. Yes. Um, They've mentioned in their magazine every now and again. Yeah, well, that's good, isn't oh, it? Yes. You know, you've got, but you've got their blessing, as yes. it were. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. yeah. Unfortunately, uh, their artist has retired. And, right. Uh, okay. And uh, I've yet to sort of make contact with a new one. Yeah, let's see, that can be a change behind the scenes, can yeah. make all the difference, can't yes, it? Yes, because. Alison was archivist for Pam and Macmillan. All right, yeah, Pam. Yeah, well, they were Pam Macmillan for yeah, a long they time. Are, well, yeah. they are still, they still are, yeah. But, yeah. but she, she still had a fondness for Pam. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm not sure if the new archivist, because of, there's a lot of work being done for Mark Macmillan as well. Yeah, right, Keeping right. Them, oh, yeah, fair enough, resources. yeah. Okay, so Pam memorabilia. So around yeah. your collection, you have a really nice selection of book of. of Pan product other than pan. So I know recently you got that lovely wire frame, which yes. we'll we'll uh, I'll have a look at oh, on the video. That, that was that was great, wasn't it? That was a lucky find because every yeah. now and again, well, practically every day, mm. <laughs> I do a Google on sort of vintage pan, and uh, it just came up. Yeah, and I couldn't believe it at the price they were asking. Yeah, and I thought straight in. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And I yeah, it. yeah. And then I didn't hear anything for ages. 
Mm. I was thinking, oh, no. Oh, no. And then, then it just arrived in the, all really well packed. And, oh, that's uh, brilliant, isn't it? With, with, the, uh, with all the white, um, the James Bond white covers that were, right. we, were shown in the display, but it said, does not include the white covers. Oh, really? And yeah. then she said, oh, I thought you'd like them. So I oh, but I didn't know that. that, yeah, that so were five, five there. white covers looked as though they'd never been read. Oh, wow. Yes. So, oh, but how much was it, if you don't mind me asking? £99. Pounds. Oh, that, what, that still, included yeah. the postage. Which would have been about a tenner, but the, you know, probably, yeah, yeah, brilliant, mate, yeah. Uh, That's probably. fantastic. But sometimes the best finds can be like yeah. that, you so know. It was, um, antique centre in Stroud. Yeah, weird, isn't it? it just came up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, How amazing. Got Ninety-nine, but well, I yeah. know the price that these things go for. Oh well, yeah. I had a, a chap send me photos of his collection in America. This was, mm-hmm. and he had all the major U.S. ones: Adele, Pocket, mm-hmm. Bantam, and. He said he's been offered thousands for some of them, and he just won't let any of them go at the moment. And he's merchandised them all with, as you do, with yes, original yeah, books. Yeah. Now, yeah. I remember there used to be a, 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 they called it the Polytechnic Bookshop in Plymouth, and they had, um, they had, but they used to have a dedicated penguin section. So it's penguin supplied bookcases, which had penguin oh, on the top, yes. and they sort of arched down like that, and they were all designed to fit together. And, and they had a row of three or four of those. And when that bookshop was shut, um, they went to one of the staff and she gave them to her husband who was a big SF collector yes. then in the 90s when I had my shop we bought this SF collection I went round I thought oh look at these penguin bookcases but I had literally nowhere to put them yes. I mean they were massive enormous you know designed for a proper shop and they're even too big for us to reuse in purple haze he said I'm just going to have to break them up and skip them yes. you know but they're the proper penguin logo at yeah. the top and along the like the skirting yeah. of them you know yeah and yes, the ones that got away. Yeah, you know, I mean, in Australia, I don't, did, you, did you send them all? Did you? I did send what the the, the, the lighted the signs, ones, yeah, like, Fontana and a pan one, wasn't <coughs> it? Yeah, I should have got my niece in Australia to to, to, to do some investigative yeah. work. But were they? I mean, because that those ones that I sent you um, were very similar to the penguin lighted book sign that I've got, the wooden one, which um, almost appears handmade, but the actual plastic penguin bit it, it's not it was something it may have been bespoke for a penguin shop back in the 50s or 60s but i bought it in the 90s from a chap in exeter and he it was a it was like a an air raid shelter <laughs> like a dome yeah. half the side was pan and half the side was penguin and i remember picking up like pan one two and three there but i was mainly the penguins i was after and i had some real rare stuff and it was cheap and he didn't do much business so i came up and i said what about your sign i'd love that sign. I said 20 quid mm-hmm. i said this is in the mid 90s i yeah. said yeah all right mate yeah. <laughs> had the van out there yeah. Yeah. um and i you know i almost bit yeah. his hand i couldn't believe he let yeah. it go for that it was so cheap because um, I've never seen another one. Mm. And it's like that wire rack. Yeah. How many of them were even produced? Yeah. Couldn't have been that many. No, I and it's, it's a, one because of the logo, logo on it. You know, it's an, uh, early a genuine one. thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a good point. Um, yeah, it's a good way of dating it, isn't it? So I always love that sort of stuff. And it's like yeah. some of the standees you've got dotted around and point of sale. Um, uh, and things like the pan record. The pan record, record. yeah. Yeah, see, uh, the, what yeah. about the early issues of them then? Yeah. So... Yes. They're not around, or no, where are um, they? I don't know. I'm are they in the archive? Five, is it, I think? Yeah, yeah we've got. Be. We've both got pretty much the range from five or six out. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, right. I, I didn't know that. I have to look um, on my website to double check, but I've yeah. got some later ones. And, yeah, yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, but why is it so rare? You know, why is it so? so I think it's like the um, junior crossword puzzle book. So, in your collection room, then it's quite nicely organised, and you've got all the pans all in the series order, the numerical order, and all the different covers, I'm assuming, in date order as well. You've got your little train set going along the top, which is really cool. That's brilliant. So that's like, that is definitely making the most of the space that you've got, isn't it? I mean, that is the way to do it, really. That is that is an archive. Um, and then you've got the drawers as well. So that, I know you predominantly collect Pam, but you do collect some other publishers, don't yes, you? Yes, I do. Fontana, Hodgenstadt, mm. and... Um, I think it's mainly those, but and a few US penguins. Yeah, because I like the covers again. Yeah, as opposed yeah. to UK penguins. There, I say it. Yeah, well, um, yeah. Well, <laughs> they're they're quite plain, aren't they? The, yes. the British ones. But I yeah. do have another website which I'm not publicising at the moment. But one day my intention is to have scanned all the other covers. Yeah. Um, at the moment, it's sort of lists of names, of titles rather mm. than the numbers. And yeah, uh, one day, one day. One day we'll get round to it. Yeah, I mean, I. Like like you, I mean, I I would say, I would still say Penguin are my main 
publisher that I collect. Um, just because, you know, once you lick the main like run, there's all the, there's so many sub series that you could get stuck into, but I do get as just as much enjoyment out of collecting the pans, but there's so, there's not so many resources apart from your website. There's no pan collector society like there is for okay. penguin. Yeah. There's no one doing, you know, academic research into the history of pan. It doesn't lend itself to that. I'd say pan was the more, the, the more popular publisher for the man in the street whereas penguin was always trying to be a bit more highbrow yes. um and posh it, you know yeah, if oh, you yes, you, yes. you know that's yes. a funny way of looking at it but i like both you know i i do you know there's authors that worked so well in penguins so so it's somebody like george orwell who i just don't think would have fitted in pan you no. just can't picture him in pan no. you know well then you do get a few surprises that you know hmm? I've never quite think, but then also I thought I always see sort of penguin maybe there, mm. pan there, but then there was another layer of very much say, substandard stuff. Yes. Yeah, see, I think Fontana are the Collins and then Fontana, I think, are also very high quality. And when you look at the books today and you feel them, they're as well made as the pan books, and the pan books do have a level of quality, the same as the penguin. If you look at some of the other ones, like the Corgis or the Hodder and Stowns, um. And then some of the you know, digits, maybe they're, mm. they're much cheaper, cheaply yeah, made, aren't they? Yes. They don't feel so good nowadays in the hand. Um, and I, d I think subconsciously that might affect people collecting them when they get a few together. What I have really been getting into the the pre-war publishers, you know, people like Toucan and Hutchinson, yeah, Pocket Albatross. Library, and that Albatross is that. I've, and I've been lucky and been able to get mm. some quite good collections of those together now. And um, they're on the Albatross is. Are lovely they're really well made but the british equivalents pre-war they're on terrible quality paper and they're not they're nowhere near as nice as these later ones but fascinating all the same you know um it's all part of that paperback collecting journey yes, isn't it you know yes. and i think we're all this stuff is there's so few people that really collect paperbacks like that particularly the early stuff or the early days of paperbacks that um but I think there's a lot of interest in it. I think people, you know, enjoy learning about it. And um, but I think if it wasn't for us sort of it's sharing true. our knowledge, I don't know yeah. what, what what would happen. I mean, if you hadn't done the Pan Collectors website, Tim, I mean that must have encouraged people there to start are, collecting. There are other collectors out there. I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's a chap in London, Derek Steer. He, he he's. He's got a bit, he needs about 10 to finish his... Uh, Does he, right? Well, there you go. Yeah. See, I didn't well, know there was anyone as close yeah, as you. Yeah, he, he was actually collecting before me. Really, think, yeah. Well, or, oh, well. He appeared to have a lot more before I... I'm yeah. Collecting. What do you think will happen to your collection when you decide well, well, to I'm move no, it on? I'm no longer here. No, I didn't want to say that because yes, yes, we're all no, immortal. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, but I do my, ask collectors this nowadays, you know. If it's my daughter, mm. she'll have a big skip outside. Oh, no. If it's my son, he'll make sure that they oh, go. Thank goodness, yeah. And I, one day, I do intend to go through the mall mm. and maybe stick a post-it on, on yeah. this one is worth looking at, this one. Yeah. I mean, some of them, no, not really. The, the newer pants. No. I don't think. Uh, nothing special. No, nothing no. special. They're just there. Oh, so, so, so and the artwork, I mean, what do you think? It would just go to a specialist auction somewhere like it that? It could do. It That'd could be do. the best place for it, yes. yeah, just put it on the open yeah. market. Yes. Okay, Tim, well, thank you for the interview. I hope the viewers have enjoyed looking at your collection whilst we've been chatting, and uh, hopefully the website is around for many, many more years to come, and that you continue to find new stuff, you know? Um, but, yeah, thank you for sharing your collection with us, and, um, okay. yeah brilliant it's just been fantastic to look at uh, so there you go so if you have enjoyed today's video don't forget to give it the uh, thumbs up do please hit that subscribe button if you've not already for regular vintage paperback content and i shall look forward to seeing you again very soon bye <laughs>